Hello my dear students, hope you all are doing well and following the lessons also and homework also which is given to you. Okay, so in the previous class uh, what we discussed, yes we discussed about how to find the domain and range of any function. So if any function is given, so always function will be given in terms of any other variable. So like suppose if f of x is given x plus 3. So domain means what we are calculating? We are calculating the possible values of x and according to the value of x, the value of f of x will change. So corresponding to the value of x, when the value of f of x will change, so all the values of f of x we will consider as range. So today also we will continue with these type of questions only, how to find the domain and range. So all of you, Write down the first question, find the domain and range of the following. Question, first question is, find the domain and range of the following. So in that, write down the first question. First is, f of x is equal to square root of 16 minus x square. Again, question is, f of x is equal to square root of 16 minus x square. In the previous class also we discussed some questions related to square root. What is our function f of x? That is a real valued function. Which type of function? Real valued function. So always f of x should take a real value only. So when inside the square root we will not get a real value? Yes, when inside the square root we are getting a negative number. So always inside the square root we should get a positive number. Positive number means it should be greater than or equal to 0. So we will write here 16 minus x square greater than or it can be equal to 0. Now what we will do? We will shift x square to right hand side. Then what will come? 16 greater than or equal to x square but in this way it is difficult for us to write so once again i am writing in this way i am shifting x square if you will check from here x square is this is the symbol where tail is there means that is that value is smaller one so x square less than or equal to 16 so we will write here x square less than or equal to 16 now understand the meaning of this question square of a number less than or equal to 16. Whose square is less than or equal to 16? Yes, we have 4. Then we have 3. Then we have 2. Then 1. Then 0. Whether minus 1 square? Yes, minus 1. Then minus 2. Minus 3. Minus 4. Only these numbers are there. In between if I will write here 3.5. Its square also will be less than 16, correct? So, what we have to find out? We can write any number between minus 4 and 4. Any real number. So, whenever we are writing real number, we are using the concept of intervals, correct? So, now here we will write. We know maximum it can be equal to 4 and minimum it can be equal to minus 4. So, x can take any value from minus 4 to 4. So, it can take the value minus 4 and 4 also. So, which type of interval? Yes, closed interval. When end points are also included, then we are writing it in closed intervals. So, we will write here x belongs to closed interval minus 4 comma 4. Meaning is x can take any real value between minus 4 and 4. So this is the, yes, this is the domain. Corresponding val value of x is called the domain. So we will write here, domain of, domain of f is equal to minus 4 to 4. Now we have to find its range. So obviously we know these are the values of x. So some values we can substitute and we will check what will be the value of f of x. So shall I start from the least one? Okay. So I am starting with 
minus 4. So just to sub substitute x is equal to minus 4. What will come? f of x square root of 16 minus minus 4 the whole square. And minus 4 the whole square is? Now when you will write in this way 16 minus minus 4 the whole square. Don't multiply these minus and minus. First what we have to do? We have to simplify the bracket. So minus 4 square will be equal to 16. Then 16 minus 16 will be equal to 0. So we are getting when x is equal to minus 4, f of x is equal to 0. Then we will take when x is equal to any other value, minus 2. Then we will check what will come. f of x is equal to square root of, substitute x is equal to minus 2, what will come? 16 minus minus 2 the whole square. So that will be equal to 4. And 16 minus 4 is root 12. Root 12, if you will check, perfect square is root 16. So obviously this value will be less than 4. Then we can take x is equal to 0. What will come? f of x is equal to, yes, square root of 16. And square root of 16 is 4. Then we can take x is equal to any other value, 3. So suppose I have taken x is equal to 3. Our values are from here, minus 4 to 4. So just some values I am taking so that it, this concept will be clear to you. If I will substitute x is equal to 3, what will come here? 16 minus 9 and 16 minus 9 is 7. So obviously its value also less than 4 only. And again if I will substitute x is equal to 4, the value of f of x will become 0. So we know we can take the value of x from minus 4 to plus 4 only. So just to check what is the minimum value we are getting? Yes, we are getting the minimum value 0. And what is the maximum value we are getting? 4. So f of x can take the value from 0 to 4. It can take the value 0 also? Yes. So f of x belongs to closed interval 0 comma 4. It can take any real value between uh, from 0 to 4. So our range of f will be equal to range of f is equal to closed interval 0 comma 4. So I think this question is clear to you. Okay. So we'll move to the next question. Now next question. Question is same only. Huh? We are finding the domain and range. Now here it is given f of x is equal to square root of x square minus 16. So again we will apply the same concept. Yes. What is that concept? x square minus 16 should be greater than or equal to 0. Then from here what will come? x square greater than or equal to 16. Or what we can write? What we can write? x square greater than or equal to 16. Who, whose square is greater than or equal to 16? Greater. It should be greater than 16. 4 square is 16. Then if you don't want to calculate then you can write in this way. x should be greater than or equal to plus or minus 4. So that will be difficult for you. So in this way just think there whose square will be greater than or equal to 16. Yes. 4 square. Whose square is equal to 16? 4 square. So 4 will come. What are the possible values of x that we are finding? 5 square also greater than or equal to 16. 6 square also. So all the values which are greater than 4 will satisfy this one. In the same way, now think of negative side also. What you can say about minus 4 square equal to 16. Minus 5 square that will be equal to 25. So that also greater than 16. So minus 5 also will come, minus 6 also will come. So in this way x can take the value from 4 to infinity and from minus 4 to minus infinity. So x can take both the values. So how we will write here? Domain of f is equal to, domain of f is equal to, first value is from 
4 to infinity. It can take the value 4 also. That's why closed bracket written there. 4 to infinity. Infinity is always open. Now, it can take this value also. So, we will write here union. When you are writing the negative number, it should be written in this way, reverse order. So, first is x can take the value minus 4 to negative side. So, minus 4 to minus infinity. So, this is the way. These are the possible values of x. So, correspondingly, we will check what will be the value of f of x. Just to think, positive side first we can check. If x is equal to 4, what will be the value of f of x? Yes, 16 minus 16, 0. If x is equal to 5, what will come? f of x square root of 25 minus 16. 25 minus 16 will be equal to 9. So that will be equal to 3. So in this way, when we will increase the value of x, value of f of x also increasing. In the negative side also, if you will check, minus 4 square. So that will be equal to 16. 16 minus 16, 0. Minus 5 square, again 25 minus 16. So we are getting the same value. And minimum value of f of x is 0. So f of x can take any value from 0 to any number there, increasing way. So we will write here, f of x belongs to closed interval 0 to infinity. So we will write range of f is equal to closed interval 0 comma infinity. So I hope this question is clear to you. Okay. Write down the next one. f of x is equal to third question is f of x is equal to 5 minus 3x f of x is equal to 5 minus 3x. x belongs to r. x belongs to r meaning x is a real number and greater than 0. So by seeing the question, can you tell me what is the domain of this question? Yes. Obviously condition is given in the question. x is a real number and it should be greater than 0. So, x is a real number which is greater than 0, not equal to 0. So, we can take the value of x except 0, 0 0.1 we can take, correct? So, don't write here 1 to infinity because then we are 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is greater than 0. So, that's why what we will write here, open interval 0 to infinity, x can take any value which is greater than 0. If you will write here in place of this, closed interval 1 to infinity, suppose. So then, where 0 0.9 will go? Where 0 0.5, 0 0.00001? Any number which is slightly greater than 0, except 0, it can take rest all the values. The smaller values also it will take, but it will not take the value 0. So, our domain will be equal to open interval 0 to infinity. Why? Because here equal to sign is not there. X cannot be equal to 0. So, this is our domain. Domain of f is equal to open interval 0 comma infinity. Now, we will check what will be the value of f of x. Already they said x is greater than 0. So, just to check, if x is equal to 0, what will be the value of f of x? Yes, it will be equal to 5 because 5 minus 3 into 0 is 0. Now, if x is equal to 1, then what will be the value of f of x? 5 minus 3, that will be equal to 2. Then, if x is equal to any other number, x is equal to 3, then what will come? f of x is equal to 5 minus 3 into 3, 9. So, 5 minus 9 is minus 4. So, just to check, when we are increasing the value of x, what happened there? First, it was equal to 5. 
then we got 2, then we are getting minus 4. Now again if we will increase the value of x, value of y is decreasing. Value of f of x is decreasing. Correct? So, x cannot be equal to 0 means f of x will not take the value 5. But it can take the value which is slightly less than 5. Correct? So, how we will write here? f of x belongs to. And since we are getting the value 5 or less than 5. If you will draw the number line, we are getting the value less than 5. So, we are moving to the negative side of our number line. So, f of x belongs to minus infinity comma 5. 5 is open because f of x will not take the value 5 because x will not take the value 0. So, our range will be equal to minus infinity comma 5. This is clear to you? Okay. So, we will do the next question. We will do the next question. Next question is f of x is equal to x square plus 5. x is a real number. Again we have to find out the domain and range. So for domain it is a clear. What is written here? x is a real number. No other conditions are given. So directly you can write domain of f is equal to r. x can take any value, any real number. Now we will check. What will be the value of f of x? Just I am taking this example so that it will be clear to you. Huh? Now if x is equal to, again first we will take the smaller one, 0. What will be the value of f of x? Yes, f of x will be equal to 5. If I will take x is equal to 1, what will be the value of f of x? Yes, it will be equal to 6. If I will take any negative value, minus 1. Yes, then also what we will get f of x is equal to 6 only. Why? x square is there. Square of any number is always positive. So this value will never be negative. Its minimum value will be equal to 0. So the minimum value of f of x will be equal to when we will write here 0, then we will get the minimum value of f of x is equal to 5. Then all the values will be greater than 5. So we will write here f of x will belongs to it can take the value 5. So that's why closed interval 5 to infinity. Rest all the values will be greater than 5. So we will write here range of f is equal to closed interval 5 to infinity. Is it clear? Okay. So, we will do some more questions. Write down f of x is equal to x plus 1. Question number 5 is f of x is equal to x plus 1. f of x is equal to x plus 1. Condition given x is a real number. Just to write down the condition there. x is a real number. So, can you tell me? What will be the domain? X is a real number written there. Yes. So its domain will be equal to domain of F is equal to R. Now we will check what will be the range corresponding values of F of X. Yes, X is a real number. And what is 1? 1 is also a real number. A real number added to a real number or suppose rational, irrational, anything x. Either it will be a rational number x plus 1 or it can be an irrational number. So f of x can, can be a rational number or it can be an irrational number. Rational numbers, irrational numbers together form real numbers. So range of f also will be equal to r. Real numbers. Either you can write real numbers or it can be denoted by this symbol also. Huh? Minus infinity to plus infinity. It can take any value. So minus infinity to plus infinity or you can write simply it is equal to r. Now one more question we will do. f of x is equal to f of x is equal to 1 by 
square root of x minus 1. Now next here we have a rational number. And in denominator we have square root also. So two things we have to remember. First what is denominator should not be equal to 0. Correct? Denominator should not be equal to 0. And one more condition. It is inside the square root. So inside the square root it should not be a negative number. Means x minus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0. But x minus 1 is in denominator. So our denominator should not be equal to 0. Then what will come? It should be greater than 0. Once again, first we checked that is it is in denominator. So our condition is denominator should not be equal to 0. But it is written inside the square root. So it can be greater than a 0. Then what will come? x belongs to x is greater than 1. x will take all the values which are greater than 1. Then what we will write? x belongs to open interval or closed interval? Open 1 to infinity. Why it will not take the value 1? If x is equal to 1 then denominator will be equal to 0. Then f of x will not be defined. So, that's why x belongs to 1 to infinity. So, our domain will be equal to, domain is equal to open interval 1 to infinity. Now, we will check what will be the corresponding value of f of x. If you will substitute x is equal to 2, then what will be the value of f of, f, f of x? f of x will be equal to 1. Now, if we will increase the value of x, obviously denominator will be greater, then its value will be smaller than 1. But when we will take any decimal numbers there, correct? 1.5 in this way, we can take any decimal number. So, it can take any value. Which value it will not take? First one, negative values will not come. And then, it will never be equal to 0 because a rational number will be equal to 0 if its numerator is 0. So, except 0, it can take any positive numbers. So, we will write here a range is equal to 0 to infinity. 0 I have written open because it will never be equal to 0. You might be thinking there. If we will increase the value of x, then f of x also, f of x will decrease only. But that is in case of integers only. When you will write any decimal numbers, then its value will increase. So, it will take the value from 0 to infinity. So, I hope these type of questions are clear to you. Okay. Now, we will move to the next type. Write down question number 2. Find the domain of the function. Question number 2 is find the domain of the function f of x is equal to find the domain of the function f of x is equal to x square plus 3x plus 5 by x square minus 5x plus 4. We don't have to find out a range. We have to find out only domain means only possible values of x. So again our f of x is a rational number. So denominator should not be equal to 0. So we will check that condition when our denominator will be equal to 0. x square minus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. How we will solve this one? Yes, either by factorization method or by using quadratic formula. So, which one is easy to you? You can use that one. Here I am using factorization. We have to find two numbers whose product should be equal to 4 and whose sum should be equal to minus 5. So, just to check, product is positive and sum is negative. So, this is possible when both the numbers are negative. And just to check the factors of 4. First is 4 into 1 and 2 into 2. 
minus 2 into minus 2 will give you plus 4. But minus 2 minus 2 will not give you minus 5. Then this is the only possibility. Both should be negative. Already we said. So the numbers will be minus 4 and minus 1. Splitting the middle term now. x square. Minus 5x can be written as minus 4x minus x. Plus 4 equal to 0. Common factor in these two terms. Yes, x. Take it outside. Then inside the bracket what will come? x minus 4. Here what is the common factor? If nothing is there what we will take? 1. And since sine of x is negative, we will take minus 1 common. So when we will take a negative sine common, sine will change inside the bracket. Positive will become negative and negative will become positive. So now we have only two terms. In these two terms, common factor is x minus 4. Take it outside. Then x minus 4 taken common. So remaining is x and here remaining is Minus 1 equal to 0. So here meaning is product of two numbers equal to 0. This is possible when one of the number should be equal to 0. So either x minus 4 is equal to 0 or x minus 1 equal to 0. So if x minus 4 is equal to 0 then we will get x is equal to 4. And if x minus 1 is equal to 0, we will get x is equal to 1. So for these two values of x, our denominator will be equal to 0. So x can take any real value except 1 and 4. So domain will be equal to any real value except which number? Only two numbers, not the intervals are huh? 1 and 4. Except 1 and 4, x can take any real value. So, I think this type of questions are clear to you. Okay. Now, we will discuss some functions. Their graph also we will draw. And then, from the graph, we will find out the domain and range of the function. All the functions which we will discuss, that all are real valued functions. So, just to put the heading there, functions and their graphs functions and their graphs. So in that write down the first function is identity function. Write down the first function is identity function. So all of you just write down the definition identity function. Let R be the set of real numbers. R means capital R. Huh? Let R be the set of real numbers, the real valued function f, the real valued function f maps from r to r, the real valued function f maps from r to r defined by f of x is equal to x, defined by f of x is equal to x is called an identity function. Written let R be the set of real numbers. The real valued function F maps from R to R defined by F of X is equal to X is called an identity function. So our function is F of X is equal to X. Now we will check how to find out the domain and range of this function. So for that, if we will draw the graph, that will be easy for us. So just to draw a small graph, okay, huh? Small graph only enough. 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, 0, not 1, 2, here, minus 1, minus 2. So when we will draw the graph there, we will take this f of x is equal to y. So, I am writing in place of f of x, y. y is equal to x. So, as in 10th class, we are drawing the graph in the same way. That table, all we are not drawing, directly we will substitute here. Huh? If you have any problem, you can draw the table. Huh? No problem there. <coughs> Suppose x and y written. So, first value. If x is equal to 0, what will be the value of y? Yes, y also will be equal to 0. 
if x is equal to 1 what will be the value of y y also will be equal to 1 if x is equal to minus 1 then what will be the value of y yes y also will be equal to minus 1 so now we'll just plot these points first coordinate is 0 comma 0 where will be 0 comma 0 yes here 0 comma 0 then next x coordinate is 1 and y coordinate is also equal to 1 so 1 comma 1 it will be here okay then next x coordinate is minus 1 and the corresponding y coordinate is also equal to minus 1 so when we will join all these points we will get the graph in this way correct so any restriction is there any value of x which it will not take x can take any value correct it can take positive value negative value rational values irrational values any value because it's not there is no restriction x cannot take any the graph is continuous there no break will come in the graph so when no break is there then we can say no break is there and no turn is also there otherwise if turn is there then we can say oh it will not take that value okay so it will go on increasing continuously both the sides there then what we will write domain is equal to r and corresponding to the value of x value of y also will be same so range also is equal to r of which one identity function so you have to remember what is identity function the function defined in this way f of x is equal to x meaning is the function is related to the number is related to the number itself now next one is second one is constant function second is constant function constant function just write down the definition let f maps from r to r defined by now i am not saying it is a real number that you are knowing there huh? so directly we will write down what is that function let f maps from r to r defined by f of x is equal to c where c is a constant where c is a constant is called constant function f of x is equal to c where c is a constant any number there okay so at present for the how to check what will be the domain and range to draw the graph in place of c i am taking a number there so suppose i am taking f of x is equal to 2 okay f of x is equal to 2 now we will check how we will draw the graph there. So to draw the graph we have to write f of x as y. So we will write here y is equal to 2. But we don't have any value of x here. So in 9th class we studied a linear equation in two variables is of the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. We have the term y here. But we don't have the term x. Then what we should do? How we will rewrite that one? Yes, it can be written as 0x plus y is equal to 2. If a term of x or y is not there, then we can rewrite it this way. 0x plus y is equal to 2. Now we will draw the graph there. Huh? Now table I am not drawing. I am drawing the graph directly. 0, 1, 2 x-axis this side negative x-axis y y dash minus 1 minus 2 1 2 minus 1 minus 2 now substitute x is equal to 0 what will come it will be 0 then y is equal to 2 so if x is equal to 0 we have y is equal to 2 this is the point now substitute x is equal to 1 what will come 0 into 1, 0. So again what we are getting, y is equal to 2. If x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2. So this will be the point. Now substitute x is equal to minus 1. Then what will come? Yes, again y will be equal to 2 only. Correct? 
So if we will join, it will be in this way, the graph. It will be a line which is parallel to x-axis. So now just to check, we have taken so many values for x. But what is coming value of y or value of f of x? That is a constant number. And what is that constant number? 2. Correct? So write down there, domain is equal to, there is no restriction for x. x can take any value. So domain is equal to r. But what we are getting range here in case of that constant I have taken as 2. So range all, always will be equal to that constant number. So just write down there, range is equal to c, where c is a constant. What is that constant number? Range will take that value only. Range will be equal to c. So constant function is clear. Okay. Now write down the next one. Third one is polynomial function. Third function is polynomial function. Polynomial function. Polynomial function. Polynomial function, just write down a function f maps from R to R, a function f maps from R to R defined by f of x is equal to f of x is equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x plus etc plus a n x raised to n is called a polynomial function. A function f maps from R to R defined by f of x is equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x plus etc plus a n x raised to n is called a polynomial function where a0, a1, a2, etc, a n are real numbers. So here graph we are not discussing because if we will draw the graph of polynomial you have to draw the graph for quadratic polynomial, cubic polynomial in this way. So many graphs can come. So this graph we are not using. Polynomial function means it can take any value there. It will depend on the quadratic polynomial or cubic polynomial. Graph will not be a constant there. Okay. So directly we will move to the next one. The next important function is the modulus function. Write down. This is most important one. The modulus function. The modulus function. The modulus function. Write down. Let uh, f maps from R to R given by the function f maps from R to R given by f of x is equal to x if x greater than or equal to 0 and f of x is equal to minus x if x is less than 0. Modulus function, the function f maps from R to R defined by f of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and f of x is equal to minus x if x is less than 0 is called a modulus function and it is denoted by f of x is equal to mod x f of x is equal to mod x but this mod x will depend on this value there huh? if x is greater than or equal to 0 then simply we will write it is it is equal to x but if x less than 0 means if it is a negative number then we have to write minus of that negative number. Correct? Now we will check how to draw the graph for this one. So when we will draw the graph, we will take this condition. Okay. So we will draw the graph directly. X, X dash, Y, Y dash. Some values we will take 0, 1, 2. Minus 1, minus 2, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2. So first one, if x is equal to 0, just to check, these are the two values which we can take there. Huh? 
if x is equal to 0, f of x will be equal to x only. Means f of x also will be equal to 0. Means y is equal to 0. So first one will be here only. 0 comma 0. Now if x is equal to 1, then what will come? 1 is greater than 0. Then in that case f of x will be equal to x only. Then f of x will come equal to 1 only. If x is equal to 1. Correct? Now we will substitute x is equal to minus 1. If x is equal to minus 1 means that is less than 0. So when less than 0 is any negative number is there. Then how we have to rewrite that one? Minus x. So our f of x will be equal to minus of minus 1. And minus into minus will be equal to plus 1 there. So if x is equal to minus 1. Then also value of f of x is positive. That is equal to plus 1. If x is equal to 2. Then f of x also will be equal to 2 only. If x is equal to minus 2. Less than 0. Then here how we will substitute? Minus of minus 2. Then minus into minus will be equal to again plus. So if x is equal to minus 2. F of x is equal to plus 2 only. So when you will draw the graph. The graph will come in this way. Just to check. Correct? In this way only graph will come. What happened here? We are not getting any negative values for y. Because your line is not coming in the negative side of y axis there. But x can be positive, x can be negative. So write down there. Domain is equal to r. Always modulus function if it is there, x can take any value. Except it is not there in denominator. And range will always will be a positive number. It can take the value 0. So range is equal to 0 to infinity. Always it will be positive. So sometimes we are simplifying in this way. Modulus function is always positive. It will take the value from 0 to infinity. Now next function is signum function. <coughs> Our fifth function is signum function. Now just to write down there. The function f maps from R to R. The function f maps from R to R given by f of x is equal to f of x is equal to 1 if x greater than 0. f of x equal to 0 if x equal to 0 and f of x is equal to minus 1 if x less than 0. f of x is equal to 1 if x greater than 0. f of x equal to 0 when x equal to 0 and f of x is equal to minus 1 for all the values of x which are less than 0. So this is the definition of signum function. Now when we will draw the graph from that it will be clear to you how to write the domain and range. So just to check what will come the graph of the signum function. Okay. Just to tell me what will be if x is equal to 0. Here it is defined in this way. If x is equal to 0 then f of x also is equal to 0. Means our coordinate will be equal to 0 comma 0. Now if x is equal to 1. For all the values of x which are greater than 0. Value of f of x is 1. So if x is equal to 1. f of x equal to 1. If x is equal to 2. f of x equal to 1 only. For all the values of x greater than 0, f of x is a constant and that constant number is 1. If x is equal to 0 0.1, then also value of f of x will be equal to 1 there. Now, just to check, if x is equal to minus 0 0.1, less than 0, then f of x is equal to minus 1. 
If x is equal to minus 1, then also f of x is minus 1. For all the values of x which are less than 0, value of f of x is same. That is minus 1. And then here we have the value plus 1 and then one more value we have 0. Whatever values of x you are taking, f of x will come either 1 or 0 or minus 1. Except these three values, f of x will not take any other value. Correct? So, write down domain is equal to domain of this function is equal to r because x can take any value. But range, when we are talking about the values of f of x, f of x is taking only these three values, no other values. So, range you can write in terms of set notation. It is taking only these three values, minus 1, 0 and 1. Now we'll discuss our last function. Write down greatest integer function. Greatest integer function. Or it is also called step function. Greatest integer function. Greatest integer function. It is also called Step function. You can write down there greatest integer function or step function. Write down the function f maps from R to R. The function f maps from R to R defined by f of x is equal to. This is the symbol for greatest integer function. Huh? The function f maps from R to R defined by f of x is equal to greatest integer function x. Just write down here. What is the meaning of this one? Greatest integer. Greatest integer. Less than or equal to x. Greatest integer. Less than or equal to x. Greatest Greatest integer less than or equal to x. So, whenever we will find out the value of f of x, from x so many integers will be there which are less than x. But from there you have to take the greatest number. Okay. So, now when we will draw the graph that will be clear to you. Okay. Now, we will draw the graph for this function. How the graph will come that we will check now. Zero, one, two, three. I am taking some gap there so that it should be clear to you. Okay. F of x is equal to this is the function which we have. So we have here y is equal to greatest integer less than or equal to x. Now, if x is equal to 0, if x is equal to 0, then what will come? In this way, it will come greatest integer less than or equal to 0. So, if you, if you will check the number line, there are so many integers which are less than or equal to 0. But out of that, the greatest number is 0. So, if x is equal to 0, y also will be equal to 0. So, this is our first point. If x is equal to 0, y also equal to 0. Now, I am taking a decimal number. x is equal to 0 0.5. I am taking x is equal to 0 0.5. x equal to 0 0.5. Then, our value of y is greatest integer Less than or equal to 0 0.5. What will come? From 0 0.5, so many integers, not any other number, only integers. There are so many integers which are less than or equal to 0 0.5. But out of that, the greatest integer is, which one? The greatest integer is 0. So, in that case also, y will be equal to 0. So, when x is equal to 0 0.5, then also y is equal to 0. 
Now I am taking x is equal to 0 0.9. x equal to 0 0.9. Then again what will come? 0 0.9. Just to check in this way. Here you wrote 0 0.9. Just write down the integers which are less than 0 0.9. Yes. 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. In this way so many integers are there. Out of these integers, which is the greatest integer? 0. So, 0 0.9 also will be equal to 0. So, if x is equal to 0 0.9, then also value of f of x is 0. Now, we will take x is equal to 1. x equal to 1. Then what will come? Greatest integer less than or equal to 1. Greatest integer less than or equal to 1. Less than or it can be equal to 1. So what is that integer which is equal to 1? 1 only. So y also will come equal to 1. So here we will get. Now again if x is equal to 1.9. Then here also y greatest integer less than or equal to 1.9. So many integers are there which are less than 1.9. But out of that the greatest number, greatest integer is 1. So if x is equal to 1.9 then also f of x will be equal to 1. So if we will check here the first one. If you will join the point the first one will come here. What is the value f of x is taking? 0. Here what is the value f of x is taking? 1. So obviously if you will check next one if we will take from 2 to 2 point just the value which is slightly less than 3. All the values will be equal to 2 only. In the same way if I will move to the negative side there. Suppose I am taking minus 0 0.1. This is 0. So minus 0 0.1 will somewhat it will be here. Now we will write all the integers which are less than minus 0 0.1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 in this way. Out of this the greatest one is minus 1. So if x is equal to minus 0 0.9, 0 0.1 value of f of x is minus 1. So till minus 0 0.9 it will be equal to minus 1 only. So again it will take the value minus 1. Obviously, in the next case, it will take the value minus 2. Now, just to check how the graph is coming stepwise. 1, 2. It is coming in steps. That's why it is called step function. X can take any value. No restriction in the value of X. So, just to write down there. Domain is equal to R. Domain is equal to R. Now, just to check the range. What we are getting in range? First we got 0, then 1. Obviously next it will be equal to 2, 3, 4. In this way it will go on increasing. Negative side, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 in this way. So we are getting in this way I think. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here minus 1, minus 2 in this way. What is this set called? Set of integers and it is denoted by the letter Z. So range will be equal to set of integers. So all of you do all these questions in your maths notebook and just check huh, whether you are getting this concept or not. So I hope these concepts are clear to you. Okay. So all of you do the homework which already I have sent you through WhatsApp. And in case of any doubt, feel free to ask the doubt. Thank you.